Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Mary Rose and today I'm going to be talking about Wildcard by Marie Lu. Wildcard uh, is the sequel to Warcross, which I talked about in my last video. So if you haven't seen that, uh, I would recommend watching that first because I do talk a little bit about Warcross spoilers in this book. Um, and I should also say while I'm on the topic, uh, this is not a spoiler free review for Wildcard either. So you've been warned. So Wild Card picks up pretty much right after Warcross. Um, Hideo's Neuralink algorithm has gone live and because Amika hacked into the Warcross final, there's this huge bounty on her head. And in order to survive, she needs to ally herself with Zero, who is Hideo's long lost brother, and the Black Coats, a gang that wants to take down the Neuralink algorithm. But for them to do that, Amika needs to get close with Hideo again. So this book came out almost three years ago, actually, like to the day. Um, it'll probably be a little bit more than three years by the time I actually get this video posted. I honestly don't remember a whole lot about the first time that I read it. I just know that I got my hands on it as soon as I could because I desperately wanted to know what happened after Warcross. Before I get into my review, a couple of content warnings for the book and things I will be discussing. Um, there are some mentions of suicide, there is a bit of gun violence, and there are a couple of character deaths, so just keep that in mind, I guess. So right off the bat, this book jumps straight into its conflict. There's no exposition, uh, which makes it a bit harder to start, especially if it's been a long time since you've read Warcross and don't exactly remember everything that happened. Uh, it was definitely something that was a problem for me, at least. A lot of the positives from Warcross really carry over well in this book. We have the same solid set of characters and the same action movie style pacing, um, and the world building is only expanded upon. Uh, one of my favorite examples is at the beginning of the book, outside of the rematch stadium, uh, where we get to see different cosplayers dress as different Warcross players, and the like fake birch fenders. Um, similar to ones that you see outside sporting events or concerts in real life. Um, and I just, I love those little details. In Wildcard, there's more development for Amika's teammates and for Tremaine, which is really great because they make this book so much better. Uh, they definitely see less screen time in Wildcard than I do in Warcross, and I think the story suffers for it. Um, especially because all of the characters that are introduced in this book are either enemies or are neutral at best towards Amika, and it's really hard to see her face these crazy insurmountable odds without a solid set of allies, which in the end is exactly what they are. Uh, Asher, Hammy, and Roshan totally come through for Amika by the end of the book, and their team dynamic is absolutely one of the best things about this duology. On the other hand, the more character development that Hideo gets, the less I like him. And I think it's because the fact that he gets to just essentially have his old job by the end of this book is so stupid to me. I mean, this is a guy who just tried to control the free will of almost everyone in the world using incredibly advanced technology that he invented. It just doesn't make sense to me. And if I had any say in this situation, the closest he'd get to any form of technology is a crappy printer from 2004. I'm not going to say that he shouldn't get the chance to redeem himself, but that's not how to go about it. Early on, there is a lot of focus on the Neuralink algorithm and its outcome, and how people who committed crimes are either turning themselves in or committing suicide over their crimes. Uh, and the reader is made aware of the fact that Hideo technically has control over whoever has the Neuralink lenses on, including for example, the President of the United States. And so this kind of ups the intensity of the argument that was introduced at the end of Warcross of free will versus preventing crime. Uh, but unfortunately, this really doesn't get a whole lot of attention further in the book. Uh, the focus is more on the action. Um, and I just would have liked to see more of the ethical dilemma behind it, I think. Compared to Warcross, uh, there is somehow more and less going on in this book at the same time, and I think it's because this book moves away from the events of the Warcross tournament, and so much of it takes place in virtual reality, and I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it definitely makes it different. In case some of my other thoughts on this book didn't tip you off, this book is so violent compared to Warcross. Um, almost right away there's a shootout and a body count, and there are characters who we learn have been dead way longer than we thought, or we watch them die on the page. 
I think the biggest issue with Wildcard is that in the last third or so of the book, uh, there are too many layers of deception and twists. Uh, because just as you think you know what's going on, something changes and someone's true intent or allegiances come to light or the scenery changes and it makes you have to rethink the entire situation. And this happens multiple times to the point where it just starts to muddy the waters too much and it makes this book really hard to read and understand. I really wanted to like this book in the same way that I liked Warcross. I wish there were more positive things I could say about it. Um, and while some of the good story elements from the last book do cross over here, there's too many twists and reveals and the book kind of falls underneath the weight of all of that. Um, reading them together is still pretty good, but on its own, Wildcard kind of suffers from the sequel isn't as good as the original syndrome. And there's just, there's just too much going on. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, you can go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos in the future, you can hit the subscribe button below. Uh, in the description box, I'll have my Twitter and my TikTok if you want to check me out there. I'll also have some of my other videos in the description and at the end of this one if you want to check out some of the other videos I have up right now. Uh, thank you so much for watching to the end. It really means a lot and I will see you next time.